Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we are going to be doing another unboxing, but this one's a slightly different one as you can probably see by the Gemini Jets boxes in front of me here. For those of you who don't know, this is what Gemini Jets boxes used to look like when Gemini Jets first came around. I can't remember exactly the year uh, Gemini Jets were founded, but it's something like, I think it's 1999, I think it is. Um, I'm not really sure, but these are some of the very first models that Gemini Jets produced. And these are also models that I've been after for a very, very long time. And this is kind of, you'll see what these are, and I, I kind of want to get more of these. <laughs> If you guys remember back a couple months ago, I unboxed both my uh, British Airways Utopia 757s and my British Airways Utopia 737s, and so I thought to kind of to kind of conclude the trilogy of Utopia aircraft, I got some of these. So these are all uh, Gemini Jets uh, Utopia livery 747s. Um, I've got four of them here, they're all different, and I've actually had this one for a very long time. I actually, I, I, I think I had this in my November collection video as well, uh, but these ones, these three back here, these are all brand new. And so without further ado, let's just go ahead and unbox these. I'm gonna start with this one, I'm gonna move these ones off to the side, and there we go. So this one is the British Asia Airways uh, 747-400 in the Chelsea Rose Liver. As you can see, the boxes are very, very different to the ones we have today. We've got this very late 1990s slash early 2000s graphic design job here with the like metal look in the background there. Then here, we don't even have the clip art of the aircraft. We have a literal picture of the model um, that's just been kind of photoshopped onto this cloudy background here. We then have the British Asia Airways logo down there, the Boeing 747-400, uh, made for collectors by collectors, the Gemini Jets logo, limited edition. I believe all of the early Gemini Jets uh, boxes say limited edition, which kind of doesn't really make them limited edition, if that makes sense, because technically all Gemini Jets models are limited edition. Then on the back here, we've got some various information about this model. You can see here we've got the type of aircraft, the line number, the registration, the engines, uh, delivery date, all of this kind of stuff. And then down here, you can see this is actually a 2002 model. The others are, I believe, 1999 models. This one is the only 2002 model. And then on the inside here, you can see we've got the model. I'm gonna go ahead and open the box now and then here inside the cradle nothing's really changed from this aspect We've still got the cradle and everything and then inside here. We have the model protected by some plastic uh, Pieces we've got the uh, old plastic nose piece here that Gemini Jets used to include We don't get that anymore and we've got this like polystyrene piece as well but here we have the model this is the british asia airways uh, 747-400 this aircraft is registered golf charlie india victor bravo this is currently in the chelsea rose livery as you can see but right now in real life this is the uh, nagus livery this is the aircraft that then went to get painted on into the nagus retro livery and i believe 2019 that would have been and this is actually the same plane that I flew on in 2018 in August 2018 and um, I flew it on the upper deck as well and this aircraft was delivered to British Airways in February 1994 this aircraft is also different because as you see this is a British Asia Airways 747 the reason for it being named British Asia Airways is this is yet again another um, aircraft that's fallen victim to the whole time Taiwan situation. For those of you who don't know, um, China, I think, still do restrict airlines, um, state-owned airlines, from operating into Taiwan. So the way airlines like British Airways and other airlines like KLM get around this is they kind of they they create a subsidiary and they call that well in this case British Asia Airways. This means that this aircraft, known as British Asia Airways, can fly into Taiwan. British Asia Airways kind of ceased operations in 2001 when British Airways stopped flying to Taipei. But other airlines like KLM, KLM still have some Asia aircraft that they fly into Taipei. And other airlines, I believe, have done this as well. Um, I believe ANA have done this, Qantas have done this in other airlines like that as well. And so this aircraft would fly solely the routes from London Heathrow to Hong Kong and then from Hong Kong to Taipei and then vice versa. 
The actual mold isn't that bad for a mold that came out in 2002, of course. Uh, things have changed around the 747 mold as of late, but this isn't really a bad model at all. It's got some different technical features like the uh, rear stabilizers as you can see here. We've got the joints here to show that this is a whole separate piece right here. And various other things like of course we've got the non-rolling landing gear, the plastic engines, and uh, we still have, no we do have the one piece wing mold as well. So it's a very primitive mold but honestly it works. It looks really good and as well this is of course in the Chelsea Rose Utopia livery. Uh, this is the livery that represents England. And with that being said I think we're gonna move on to our next model now. I'm gonna move this off to the side and next up here we have the regular British Airways not British Asia Airways we have the British Airways 747 in the Tartan livery. Now the Tartan livery represents Scotland I in fact do have both the Tartan livery and the Chelsea Rose livery on the 757s as well. These are probably two of the best liveries that the Utopia project kind of produced and yeah the box is exactly the same I won't bore you with those details twice uh, so we're just gonna go ahead now and open in the box. Inside here we have the model. This model as you can see uh, down here is a 1999 model so this is one of the very first uh, models that Gemini Jets produced and inside the cradle here we have the model exactly the same packaging we've got the polystyrene thing on the fuselage there and then we have the plastic piece covering the nose. This is personally one of my favorite liveries and this is depicted on uh, Golf Charlie India Victor Oscar. This aircraft was delivered in December 1997, which suggests to me, I don't know this for a fact, but I believe this must have been delivered in this livery as 1997 is when British Airways made the switch from the Landor livery to the Project Utopia liveries. And then in 2001, I believe that's when they started painting their 747s into the regular Chatham Dockyard livery. Again, this is a really, really cool aircraft. As you can see, it's pretty much the same. We've got that huge Gemini Jets logo on the bottom of the aircraft there. Um, that is one thing that has been minimalized um, over the years. Uh, the Gemini Jets logo is no longer that big. But yeah, it's the exact same mold. Uh, nothing's really changed mold-wise about this model. But of course, we've got the Scottish Tartan livery on the back here. It looks really, really good. And apart from the tail, of course, there isn't anything really differentiating this aircraft from the other liveries so I'm gonna move this one off to the side now and kind of move on to the next aircraft and next we have the British Show 747 400 in the Delft Blue Daybreak livery this is the livery that represents Holland and inside the cradle here once again for the third time we have the polystyrene piece and of course the uh, nose plastic piece on the front here uh, there we go just taking that piece off and there we go, look at that. Now this aircraft is very interesting because this is a registered uh, Golf Charlie uh, India Victor November. This is the 747 that Gemini Jets are releasing at the moment, the 1 to 200 uh, 747s that Gemini Jets released a couple months back and the 1 to 400 ones that Gemini Jets have just produced. Uh, those are registered as the November registration, so this is the same plane as the ones that are currently being uh, kind of produced, as I just said. Okay, so I'm getting some conflicting uh, messages here. On the aircraft here, it says it represents the Netherlands. On the box, it says Holland. So I don't know whether that's a mistake by Gemini Jets. I, I should probably look into whether this livery does represent the Netherlands or Holland. I believe the Delft Blue uh, Daybreak um, is out of the Hague. I've just tried looking up whether the Hague is in Holland or not. Um, but it just brings up like a, it just brings up a thing saying The Hague, city in the Netherlands, and just gives me all the information about it. I just want to know whether it's in uh, Holland or not, because Holland is like a section of the Netherlands, it's not the whole country, and it doesn't want to tell me that. So, yeah, I'm not sure for a fact whether this is... Um, representing the Netherlands or Holland but yeah still it's a very very cool um, aircraft as you can see we've got the tail here but yeah this livery is so cool um, I believe it's based on the pottery that they make around the Hague um, it's very traditional to that area so that's why this aircraft represents the Netherlands but yeah it's a really cool livery and apart from that we're gonna move on to the fourth and final aircraft 
And the fourth and final aircraft we do have is the British Airways 747-400 in the livery that represents South Africa. And I'm going to have a go at pronouncing this livery's name, Nundbel Emily. Um, I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce that, I'll put it on the screen how it's kind of spelt. But yeah, this is the livery that represents South Africa. I believe there are two liveries that represent South Africa, but this is one of those liveries. I'm going to go ahead and open the box now. This livery is probably one of my favorites as well. This one just has a lot of color in it. This aircraft is registered Golf Bravo uh, November Lima Oscar. It was delivered in October 1990, meaning that this is probably delivered in the Landor livery. And then seven years later after that it was painted into this livery before then getting repainted into the regular Chatham Dockyard livery uh, later on in the early 21st century. Again, as you can see, the tail looks amazing. I'm gonna get a shot of all of these tails lined up. Um, but yeah, this one looks really, really, really good. And yeah, here we have all the liveries. Starting off here, we have the South African livery. Then behind that, we have the uh, livery that represents the Netherlands or the Delft Blue Daybreak livery. After that, we have the Tartan livery, which represents Scotland. And then finally there, down the end, we have the Chelsea Rose livery, which of course represents uh, England. These liveries look absolutely amazing. I'm such a fan of the Project Utopia kind of livery scheme, and I would love to get more of these 747s. I know more of them do exist. Um, I've seen on Google Images, there's that one photo um, of, I'm not sure whose collection it is, um, but there's just a photo I've seen that you know somebody has all all of the liveries and that's kind of my goal right here. I currently have four of these and there are other ones out there. I believe some of them are 747-200s. I would probably only really be interested in the 400 variants of this livery. Um, one aircraft I really want to get is the Waves and Cranes livery which is the representation of Japan. Uh, that aircraft is the same registration as the um, the window piece I have of a 747 and so I would really really like to get that model in particular but overall I just want to get all of them and so yeah my uh, project utopia kind of fleet grows even further and with that I want to thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one bye